Welcome to Life of an eBay Seller. In this particular podcast, which is going to be number three, we are going to go into what kind of places you should go, where you can find unusual bargains that you can resell for a lot more money on eBay itself. One of the things that I really like to do is to go to places such as Thrift Shop, Salvation Army, and other places that sell unique and unusual rare items. Now, the key for you to find something that is of value in those places is to go to a lot of those places because you just never know which ones are going to have something of value that they sell on them. So you might have to go through a lot of junk before you find something that is really truly is worth a lot of money. Now, when you go to those places, the whole key for you is not to go to a place that is visited by a lot of traffic. What I mean by that, let's say for example, you wanna go to a Salvation Army and get something unusual to resell for a lot of money on eBay itself. If you live in a big city, if you go to that Salvation Army, there's gonna be so much traffic that's gonna go in and out of that particular location, that it's very hard to find a very good bargain in there unless you visit that place a lot of times or you visit it when the merchandise just comes in. Unless you know when it actually comes in, your chances are of finding something very unusual that's gonna be worth a lot of cash is gonna be pretty slim. So the second method for you to go about is you wanna go to a place that's gonna be a little bit farther out of the town itself. The more far away it is from a major city, the less traffic that particular place actually gets, which means that those places, there is actually certain cities, and I know a few that are next to me, that do have a lot of vintage shops and they're all over the place. If I go to those places, I know I can get something unusual for very low amount of cash that I can flip for a lot more money on eBay itself. On the other hand, the same thing with the Salvation Army. If you go to one of those places that doesn't have that much traffic, you know you can find something that is unusual in that location. You can take it, you can flip it, and you can get a lot more money in it as well. So that's what I suggest for you to do. You gotta travel to places that not a lot of people travel in because the place itself, once you go in there, you will see it's organized in a different way. There is not that many people who come in, which means the amount of goodies that they have been sitting there for quite some time, which also means the prices itself are not gonna be as high as in the big cities for the same quality of the same merchandise. Plus, you can find some unusual and rare items in those places as well. So my suggestion for you is to have a set limit of money that you have a cap on before you go to all those places because you don't want to spend like 200, 300 bucks in all those places, get a lot of merchandise and then have issues with you selling it. You want to set a cap of let's say 50 bucks maximum. You go in there and you go into a lot of places. You don't want to just spend all your money in one location. That's not a wise choice. You want to spend about 10 bucks in one location 10 in another and so on and after that you get enough merchandise for you that you can try to flip on ebay itself another thing and this is the big key here is to look for quality merchandise just because you went to a place and you couldn't find anything doesn't mean you have to just grab something to try to flip it that's the wrong way of thinking in fact if i go to 10 different places and i can't find anything that i can resell I'm just going to keep on going to another location. I'm not just going to go and grab something and hope it's going to flip for more money because I want to have the most biggest odds of success as I can possibly find. And my way of doing this is very simple. If I can turn one buck into 10 bucks, that's the kind of merchandise I want to get. Or a $10 purchase that I make, I want to at least make a hundred bucks on it. This is my way of thinking. So if the item itself, I don't think I can make at least 10 times, 
what I paid for it, I'm just going to skip over it and go for something else. So that's my rules. You have to have a set of rules you go by because otherwise you'll be like, oh, this is kind of cool. Let me get this. Let me get that. And after a while, you just have a humongous amount of merchandise and then you can't resell it for its value that you paid for it, which is why record keeping is also very important. When you buy something, make sure you write on a piece of paper and find out how much exactly you paid for this item so you can list it for a lot higher once you put it on eBay. And people who are not good with records and writing things down are not going to make that much good money on eBay itself. The biggest problem that you're going to run into is accounting because now what you're going to have is you're going to be overspending and then you're going to be selling stuff and you just don't know how much you're making because first of all eBay takes a cut, PayPal takes a cut and then your gas expenses and the amount of time you spend looking for merchandise all that stuff you have to consider, including the postage cost as well, when you are trying to make money on the eBay business itself. So you got to constantly have records. You want to know that you're actually making money on this business and not just breaking even because breaking even is okay when you're just starting out, but that's not a healthy mindset for you to be able to sustain this business for the long term because not only you want this business to pay for itself, you also want to make a living doing this. And if this is your mindset and this is what you actually desire and want to do, you got to put as much effort as you can into educating yourself, into taking the money that you make in this business and putting it right back in the business itself. And then also important for you is to save a bit of the money itself so you have something to show for or invest in the business as well. A few things that you should be able to invest in this business is not only the merchandise itself, you also need a good enough computer because when you are going to be creating the auctions, if the computer is pretty slow, it's going to take you forever to list them and it's not going to be fun whatsoever to actually do this. Another thing you actually need to invest in is some kind of a camera that you actually be using to take pictures because your smartphone camera is just not going to cut it. If you want to get the top money on eBay, you need to have professional pictures because pictures is going to be the number two most important thing when it comes to selling your item. The number one thing is the description, but pictures and description combined is going to make a very powerful listing that's definitely going to get you the extra cash that you dissolve for whatever item you put for sale. So those are the things that you have to do that's definitely going to take your auctions to the next level. It's going to get you the merchandise you need to make money on eBay itself. And lastly, you're going to have a healthy mindset when you go to places because now you know you want to get items and you're only getting quality items to list on eBay because your client is the one who is going to be buying it from you. Remember, you're opening an online store. And when you open your own online store with your own vintage and unique items niche, you want to make sure every one of the items that you put in the store itself is a quality item that it's very hard to find anywhere else. Because the customer itself, when they look at your store, you want them to look at all the items you have there and think in their mindset, wow, this guy has very good items listed for sale and now he actually lowered the price. So I want to get something for myself or get something as a gift to somebody else. This is why the holiday season is the time that you usually stock up for on eBay itself. And this is the time of the year everybody gets so excited about because during December itself, Christmas, the holidays, it's all coming up and people want to get unique and different kind of gifts. And all year round, the sales are nothing compared to that time of the year. That's why you have to get ready. And you're almost getting ready almost all year round for that specific season, which actually starts with Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is actually the time that the holiday season officially starts. But this is the key for you. If you want to be successful in e-commerce business, you got to open up your store and you got to make sure it's ready for business 
at least a month before the holiday season itself starts. So you want to have as much publicity as you can all year round and during that specific time that's when you your prices are going to come a bit down. That is the key. Although the whole year your prices usually are pretty steady during that time of the year you roll the merchandise prices a little bit and then you keep on discounting it until you get rid of most of your merchandise by the time the whole holiday season is about to be over. Now here is another key that's very very important around January is when you usually end up trying to get rid of most of your merchandise not in December this is a key mistake some newbies actually make they try to get rid of everything before Christmas but there's going to be a huge month that you're missing which is from around end of December to mid January and people are still buying gifts during that time of the year so you don't want to miss that important time of the year as well you don't want to get rid of all your merchandise until middle of January and after that, whatever you haven't sold, you keep it for next year. There is no reason for you to get rid of everything. But you want to get rid of what you're selling for very good prices. Because that means you can go next year and you're doing the same process all over again. You're, you're going to go to a lot of those places I mentioned in this course itself. And I'm going to go back and get as much merchandise as I can. And I do this process all over again. So by, by next year... I want to make even more money than I made this year. That is my goal year after year. You want to increase the amount of money you make every single year. And you try to do the same exact thing, but even better next year. Avoid the mistakes and try to replicate every single success you had this particular year and try to make it better next year as well. So see you in my next podcast and have a great day.